The cactus wren is the Arizona state bird. Not that that means much to the average cactus wren. It's not like you're going to see him wearing little bullet ties or something. But he's the obvious choice for that distinction because he epitomizes how birds survive in that hot, thorny environment. And he's often out in the open, easy to see. This wren has a bright white eye stripe and an apricot belly speckled with dots that converge into a dark bib on his throat. He's unlike other wrens because he doesn't cock his tail. Instead, he does what they don't, fans it out. And he's not a skulker like his cousins. He's almost an exhibitionist, in fact. He often poses atop a cactus for his admirers, or fusses at them like an old car that's trying to start on a cold morning. Notice that this wren's gully is white rather than apricot, and he has barely any bib. That's because this one's not an Arizona specimen. He's a California cactus. Ouchie, ouchie. As I watch him, my toes are curling under to protect the soles of my feet. He bounces to look in a new direction as easily as we would shift our weight from one foot to the other. But he's doing it on those little tufts of fine needles. Yeah, the way his feet wrap around that cactus, though, you'd never suspect it wasn't velvet. Birds have leathery feet, and the wren isn't the only one of them that's comfortable sitting on a choya or saguaro cactus. None of those three birds weigh much more than a whisper, so their tough feet settle softly onto cactus needles, with their feathers protecting the skin. The wren is at home in a stark, beautiful landscape of rapiers and ice picks. Now, it's true that he weighs enough that his twitchy movements jerk the cactus. He's not quite just a bundle of feathers. But he's obviously fine there, and he deems cactus beds his allies because they feed him and protect him. He builds nests in the middle of them where snakes are unable to approach. He finds food on the cacti and on the ground beneath them, foraging in the open when the weather is cool, then, when the desert heats up, hunting in the shade of the cacti. There's plenty to eat there, and he gets whatever water he needs from the prey and from the fruit he finds. Like threshers that also forage in leaf litter for their food, the wren has a decurved beak for rooting around in the ground cover, tossing up leaves and cactus needles as he searches for bugs. He looks like he lives life hunting for the lunch meat that got shoved to the back of the bottom shelf of the refrigerator. Here he's caught something, but I can't tell what. Cactus wrens like to eat spiders and wasps, and bees, apparently. He often pecks at the cactus. For insects, maybe? Think you can tell where he'll emerge? He can make a living looking for grasshoppers and beetles, but he has to be sharp-eyed and persistent. And he has to recognize that when it comes to the food supply, opportunism is necessary. Meat is his first choice, but he'll also eat seeds and berries. Or he might find a saguaro pod that's split open and help himself to the fruit. Lots of moisture in that snack. This is a bird who has adapted beautifully to a harsh climate. And as long as we don't mess too much with his habitat, he does very well. Unfortunately, we have been messing with his habitat and his numbers are declining. Mm -hmm.